How's it going guys? Over the summer I picked up a steel EDT8 uh, tachometer and what I want to do today is just show you guys a little bit about uh, what's in the box and, and how this thing works. And I've been using chainsaws for a, a long time and I'm sure I've turned the screws on them a little bit but usually and I want to say uh, you know I've only owned steel chainsaws if you buy your saw from a steel dealer, uh, usually you can just bring your saw back to the dealer and if you don't think it's running right, they'll just go to the parking lot and turn the screws for you. I've, I've never had any issues with that. And I think that's something I just want to kind of point out is, you know, when you're, when you're going to a big box store and you see a row of chainsaws or you talk about going to your dealer uh, to buy one, whether it's steel or another dealer, even though the price might be lower at the big box store, it's very frustrating. You're not going to walk into a big box store with your chainsaw and ask them if they can tune it and you're not going to walk into a big box store most of the time and, and find the parts you need whereas most of your smaller shops uh, that, that have the saws on the shelves they know the saws are the top sellers will carry the parts so I've never had an issue whatsoever with my steel saws whether I need a new chain, I need a new air filter or I just need some advice and you know not all of us work in trees for a living so sometimes you just need someone to ask a basic question but uh, what I've been doing is, is you know, the, the thing, it comes in a box like this, but I actually keep the tachometer in the box I always bring with me when I'm using the saw. So I, I kept it in the bubble wrap. So this is what it looks like right here. So this little guy here is the steel EDT8. And if you look at the back, there is no battery compartment on this one. Uh, so they say the battery should last for quite a while. So basically it's ready to go and I'll, I'll show you the attachments in a minute but you see this little arrow on the front here? What you want to do is you want to put this arrow you want to put this arrow as close as you can to the spark plug when it's running and this will count how many RPMs your saw is running at so that way you'll have a good indication of where you are and I mean that's a pretty small guy I mean you could definitely put it in your pocket and you know hopefully you're not going to need to tune your saw that often but if you don't think it's running right or you want to check it for some reason, you got this guy and you can make sure you don't go too high with the RPMs. So we've already looked at the tachometer, uh, but this is what, this is, uh, you know, the box it comes in and it comes in darn near every language known to mankind. And then we can open it up and it comes with a wire here. And what you can do with this wire is you can put it up through the bottom and then turn it over and if for some reason your spark plug is hard to get to for some reason your spark plug is hard to get to you can use it like that and then you can do the same idea with this alligator clip as well okay and then these are the directions which uh, uh, more pictures and I, have, I haven't quite figured all of it out yet but it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically you just want to hold this arrow or the wire as close to the spark plug as you can to count the RPMs. Before we head out I just want to show you something on these steel chainsaws. Now this saw is from around uh, 1995 and I'm not sure if they still do it or not but if you take the air cleaner off the back there's what's known as the cold weather shutter in here, this little flap in the back. I don't know if you can see that. But what you want to do, and, and I've honestly never done this until this winter and the saws run fine, as long as it's closed, but if it's going to be below 50 degrees when you're using the saw, you want to open this shutter over here. And you, oh, it's working fine now. Um, so you just push it over. I was having a hard time getting the thing to open the first few times so what I had to do was actually take uh, a screwdriver and a hammer and just kind of gently tap it not so hard it breaks but gently tap it to loosen it up but it seems to be working perfectly fine now and then what I did is I put on the back of the cover here I used I used uh, this is a paint marker black paint marker this is a, there you go so this is a black paint marker. So it's not a Sharpie. This is actually paint. And I just painted this on today that if it's under 50 degrees, I need to have that open. And if it's greater than 70, I need to have it closed. Because if it's not closed, you can overheat your engine. But what this does is it allows, 
it allows some warm air from the, the um, cylinder to come in and keep your carburetor warm in the colder weather. So that's just something that's good to know if you have a steel chainsaw. But let's go outside now and we'll put some gas in the saw and see if we can uh, try out this tachometer. When I was collecting firewood, I found this nice log, which is just the perfect height for a workbench. So I just put this by the house, so when I want to fuel up my saws and be outside, where it's nice and, uh, nice and light, I can just put the saw right on top of here. So I hate to sound like a broken record, but if you read the directions for your saw, it's going to give you a lot of great information. And on this saw, the maximum RPMs you want is 13,000 RPMs. And I'd personally rather be a little bit low uh, and be safe than to be too high. Now the last time I used this saw, um, when I was going through to the end of the day, the spark plug was a bit loose. So I'm kind of curious to see if this saw ends up actually being out of range or not. Uh, the other thing is there's, there's three screws here. You've got the LA screw, which controls the idle as far as like how quick the idle is. Um, and then you've got this L screw, which is the low speed screw, and I really don't know too much about that. But that controls how quickly it accelerates when you, when you hit the gas. And then you've got the, uh, the H screw, which is your high end. And as long as you don't set that H screw too high, you're going to be okay. But if you have any questions, you know, go to your dealer. Um, they're full of answers and maybe they'll tell you to just come see them rather than get the uh, tachometer. I just, I just got to the point in life where I wanted to um, be a little more interactive with my equipment and uh, hopefully, hopefully we're not going to break anything. So we're going to start the saw and get it warmed up and see how we do. So all we need to do now is just hold this, hold this arrow as close to the spark plug as we can get. And that'll tell us how many RPMs we're at. Now you shouldn't throttle your saw in more than a few seconds without it being in a load. looking pretty good. So that looks pretty good. We're right under 13,000. a little bit of fudge factor, so that's, I'm good with that. Now if I had to adjust anything, I would take this screwdriver and put it in the high screw and then play with the, you know, move it a little bit and then check it again. But that's how your EDT8, EDT8 works. The purpose of this video isn't to make a tutorial about how to tune chainsaws. I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there that know more than me about tuning saws. There's definitely a lot of guys out there. Uh, if you have questions though, please go to your dealer, read the directions. And um, you know, if you do know a lot about tuning saws and have some tips for me, please leave them below uh, in the comments section. But I just want to stress folks, you know, um, it's not a tutorial, it's just 
when I was looking for the EDT-8 and what it does, I couldn't find any good videos about it or information. So that's more of a hands-on look at what the thing does. So have yourselves a wonderful day and thanks for watching.